welcome to Ashland High School Varsity Sports on WACA-TV. Tonight, the Ashland Public Schools and the Tri-Valley League present boys varsity basketball with the Ashland High School Clockers hosting the Millis High School Mohawks. Tonight's game being played on December 23rd, 2014. And along the side of me tonight, Bob Martell. Bob, the Clockers need another win. They will get a win, their first win of the season uh, last Friday night against Bellingham, and they'd like to make it two in a row tonight against the Mohawks. Yeah, Ashland's still uh, trying to find their way, Bob. They've got uh, a, a veteran team, a lot of seniors, a lot of juniors, no underclassmen. <laughs> And uh, trying to find, uh, trying to find the, the team personality. Uh, Coach commented that uh, they're okay. They're just trying to find their way. It's a, it's an interesting league for this this team this year. They don't have uh, dominant size. Uh, they don't have a lot of uh, uh, players with uh, resumes. But they come into this game with uh, uh, a number of good players and uh, some scoring potential against the Millis team that also is one and two and trying to find themselves. The uh, clock is, Bob, it's hard to believe, but only a year ago they won their first 19 games. Isn't that amazing? And lost the season finale to finish 19-1. and one. They're the defending Tri-Valley League champs. Yeah, they lost a lot. And we'll pause now for the national anthem. <laughs> That was recorded, Bob. Was that recorded? It, it was, was a recorded. It was version. recorded, but it was. Uh, it was, was it recorded by well a, a, a non-celebrity or? I think it was one of our own. Yeah, that's what it mm -hmm. sounded like to me. I know from Ryan Quigley who that was. Nice job. Uh, Allison Jenkins, Coach Jenkins, bringing a, a squad of 12 cheerleaders tonight to root the uh, the clockers on. You know, uh, I think that's expanded from football. From what I, uh, football had a very thin squad out there cheering for them. And uh, I think they've expanded. Just a few have been added to the squad. And they're actually cheering, which is a nice thing. Uh, yeah. Good good rooting section tonight, too. A lot of students here tonight. Uh, I don't think a lot of the college kids are back just yet, Bob. I don't think, I don't think there's any school tomorrow. Yeah. You know, the Clockers uh, had the Tri-Valley League MVP last year, uh, Joey Burns. Joey Burns. Yeah. Gone along with uh, John Iarusi and, uh, yeah. and the other boy there. Uh, Replaced uh, Shane. Uh, but uh, this year, another Burns on the team, number 15. This boy is a returning starter, and he's Max Feinberg. Max Feinberg, who uh, is not shy and, and can't be about putting the ball up. He's the guy to go to this year with uh, the losses to graduation. Uh, Shane starts off pressing right away. Press off a made basket. Max did a lot of scoring last year, but he still wasn't the main guy. This uh, year he is. He will be the man. The Mohawks, as they always do, make the playoffs and always do very well in Division Four. Nice little back cut there by Ivan Akerbog. You know, the Mohawks uh, face tough, tough competition all year long, so when they get to the tournament and play against schools their own size, they do very, very well. It is, uh, it is the payoff for a long, grueling season in the Tri-Valley League, where they usually don't do that well. Uh, but in the tournament, they have great success. A play to watch for the Mohawks, number four, Ivan Archipov, and number 24, Kevin Quiriso. Hand on that one. Nice uh, nice piece that time by Cam Faniff. 
Francis Obega, number five, is out there. He's a senior. He was a JV player last year, a varsity player now. They got pushed off, I think. Yeah, first foul of the game, Francis Lubega from the back. They always call that one. If you don't get position. Clark wasn't reset probably or something, Bob, or was there a kick? Not sure why he stopped the play there. He, maybe he wasn't ready. Justin Warren. Two good officials tonight. I think uh, we'll see a nicely uh, run game. Carter Burris is number 20. He's in the backcourt along with Justin Wong. On the cut. Up and in. Nice reverse. Carter lane. Burris. Carter Burris. Max bringing it up. It's a force out, but they don't call that anymore. Feinberg down the base. No basket fouled along the Fouled way, the, no uh, continuation. The in the NBA, that's a basket, but not in high school. And a returning player from last year, Mike Boudreaux. Both the Boudreaux's played last year, and they're both on the team this year. Mike is uh, 22, and Paul is 34. A lot of brothers. Max, short. Ashton has two sets of brothers, too. Oh, a sneak away, up and in. All layups from Millis. That's Ivan Archipo. His second. Ashton better get back on defense. This Millis team likes to run. This could be a track meet. Boudreau to Boudreau. Now Max has it. Finds a Boudreau. They try to get it into. Is that Cam Faneth? It is. Uh, Cam was a big guy cog last year. Yeah, he's a good defensive player, and uh, you'll always know he's in the game. Nice job there on uh, Millis defense off uh, Cam's hands and out of bounds. Cam wears 33. Clockers were the Tri Valley League champions last year. They're the defending champs going into the 2015 season. There's a beautiful steal. Bounces it off his own man to resume his dribble. <laughs> I don't think Kuzi ever did that. That's Mitch Porter, number 14. Nice La Vega. La Vega gets in good position, low on the baseline. Nice left hand. I don't know if he's left handed. We'll find out. And another layup swatted away by Mike Boudreau. Yeah, free path, Jackson Barrett to the basket, but a get back by Boudreau and a nice block. They, they've been getting away with a lot of that right side stuff, Bob. Ashton has to play a little, pay a little attention to the defense. Basic basketball. Yeah. Layup, layup, layup. That's all it's been. Six to four. Clark has trailed two. Akapov is going to inbound it. How are we pronouncing his name? Oh, beautiful pass. Yeah, that's a nice finish by Corizio. Quiriso. Kevin. Corizio, I think you say. Nice baseline drive and dish. Long three. Boudreau, uh-uh. Boudreau with the steal. Good hustle defense. Boudreau, nice play. Defanif. Porter. Max down the line, up and in. Nice, and that's what he can do. He he can pretty much get to the rack whenever he wants to. I love that over the outside shot, Bobby. Yeah, good quicks. You got to have both. Yeah. A nice Another steal. In. Oh, they got it right back. Cam Faneuf, nice anticipation. Oh, a spin move in the lane. The dipsy do, and he picked up the foul. I guess it's on Cam. Might be uh, possession. Let's see if he. Yeah, he's calling a foul. Looked like a pretty clean block, Bobby. Had that ball down by his waist. It is on Cam, his first. Yeah. And Kevin Quiriso is at the line, the senior. Good size. He's of the solid variety, yeah, not he, particularly thin. He and Akapov, I think, are the, uh, the primary go-tos in their offense. You're going to go with Akapov? Yeah. POV is Pod, right? I think there's a K yeah. in there, too. So it's, That's early, though. Yeah. I can hip off. <laughs> I don't know. It's whatever. I like it's whatever you say. Akapov sounds good to me. Porter the dipsy do got carried away. That's not Porter. Chris Van Cleef. That's Chris Van Cleef. Tries to contact yeah. there. Get himself a little turned around, but uh, Chris wears 11. Mitch Porter wears 14. Uh-uh. Chris, a little balance issue there. Get up on his toes, and you can see a little wobble. 
When you're shooting free throws, you can stay on the floor. So uh, keep that balance. His legs are nice and spread. He's got good head up. That's much better that time. And he, he nails the second one. Ashland down a bucket. Blocked partially, swatted out of bounds by Van Cleef. You know, it's, it's still amazing to me, Bob, in this modern era, how the players, uh, they, they don't use the, the bounce pass like we did. It's very effective. It's hard, hard to defend the bounce pass. Up in the air, the ball is too exposed. Oh, please. Call a timeout? Yeah. Timeout. Okay. I mean, he was trying to back him in, Bob, yeah. from the three-point arc. <laughs> I mean, well, that, that, had, that play was nowhere to go. I was scared it was a foul because that really was going It looked like he nowhere. initiated contact, and uh, but whatever. He's, and uh, the whistle blew, and then uh, all of a sudden I looked over, and I saw yeah, Coach the other official him. pointing for a timeout. Coach rescued him. Well, Ashland playing a man defense primarily. Millis playing a, uh, a matchup zone. Uh, both teams getting their opportunities, but Millis has had some pretty easy chances for layups on the right side down here. So uh, Ashland has to watch that that uh, that quick getaway that that Millis has been able to affect so far. It's nine to seven. The clock is a trailing by uh, two, and we've seen some good fast-paced basketball here in the first period. Clockers have coming off a win against Bellingham uh, last week, and. Uh, the they had also had losses to Dover, Sherbin, and Norton to begin the season. Well, two veteran coaches, uh, teams that look pretty evenly matched. I don't expect this to be a, a blowout either way. I think it'll be uh, it'll be close. Things could change. You never know foul situations and that sort of thing. But uh, right now, it doesn't look like either team has a a, a, a clear-cut superiority. Acapulco inbound it. Deflected by Feinberg. Here comes Porter. Hard to the hoop. He was not defended, and I think it threw him off. Yeah, I think he expected contact, and it didn't come. Yeah, he first, didn't even put his hand up, Bob. First responsibility, get the get to the hoop and get the ball up. If they're going to swat it, let him. Mark up off a practice shot. It will not count. Fouls starting to accumulate here. 3.39 to go in the first period. Three fouls on Ashland. Porter picks up his first. Two fouls on Millis. Akapov will inbound it again. This time it goes to Sean Page, number three. Looks to be a ball handler, but has got nowhere to go. Well, he's got the purple shoes, Bob. He's got to be a point guard. Nice pass in there. Nice interior pass. He couldn't get it to go, but a great, great yeah. passing and a good Good move yeah. to the hoop, I like guess. Like you said before, Caruzio has that big body, Bob, but he got a uh, good position there and used it well. Just couldn't finish, but he did draw the foul. Tight passing, working very well for the Mohawks. Everything going to the hoop. No threes, no long twos, nothing like that from the Mohawks no. so far tonight. They will succumb, they all will. teams do. They will. They will. It's just irresistible. Now, Caruzio, uh, Looks like if he has a weak part of his game, it's at the free throw line. Especially if the clock has packed the paint, then you got to do it. Yeah. Feinberg, full court pressure by the Mohawks. First press by... Uh, Porter gives up a dribble, finds Boudreaux deep. He goes strong to the hoop, but he couldn't finish. Strong move, but the clock is having able to get the ball down. Arkhamov They've been to the rim. On the cut to Page, back to Arkhamov. There's the three ball. Uh-uh. A scrum and the jump. No possession arrow, just uh, Ryan Quigley's thumb. Who got the who got Willis, the uh, Willis gets the ball. The table has most of the lights on, but not the uh, possession arrow on the bonus. Trademark equipment donated that table to the Admark. Pegararo donated that table to Ashland High School. Yep, still. His uh, company was Trademark Equipment. Mark, a great benefactor for the Ashland uh, athletic programs. Great friend of Ashland. Ashland High School Athletics. Page, the floater, uh-uh. Nice rebound. Boy, did Boudreaux sky for that. Yeah, he, he cleared that glass. Gets it to his brother, who drew, loses his dribble. Feinberg finds Boudreaux underneath. One or two extra steps oh, and jump. a jump ball. That I didn't a, see uh, the four hands, Bobby, did whistle, you? Quick whistle, and that was uh, maybe a little premature call. 
I didn't see it. Yeah, a little contact, but so let him play. Contact never results in a jump ball. Boudreau the three. That's Paul. Paul with his first points, and they're, they're three. Nice. He looks smooth on that one. Tie Tessie game. It. Tens. Pair of tens, Bobby. Page. Akapov. Oh, nice move there. Quick move and a dish underneath, and he finishes. Yeah, Carrizio finishes. Kevin Carrizio. That on play him. was made by the penetration. The penetrator was Carter Burris. Boudreau again underneath, can't get it to go. Yeah, pretty strong move to the hoop, but he... Uh, Arkhipov held his ground ball. Yeah, he put himself into trouble there. Well, ashton has got to the rim a few times. He just got to finish. Let's see if Burris can make another play. He's number 20. Querico by himself, yes! Querico. Chance for a traditional three-point play. Who draws for his foul, Bobby? Ashton, five team fouls, Millis. Oh, well, they only gave two. that one to Mike, huh? Yep. So the Boudreaux brothers still out there, are they? Yeah. No. Mike's on the bench. This free Fan throw, so he in. doesn't make the uh, traditional three point play, but he has uh, eight points in this first period. Caruzio. Max has been quiet. Let's see if he forces himself to take a shot. Or if he stays within the flow. Boudreau, very active, tried to thread it to Max. It didn't work. That's got to be a foul, Bob. That's be a foul on Caruzio. I mean, I know he didn't mean it. No, and again, uh, this one of those is, ones. There's nothing else you can call. I don't know if he called a foul or a kickball. You got to call something. He called a foul. That's his second. And like we mentioned earlier, that two fouls in the first period. With yeah, Caruzio, that's, uh, that's something the that coach has to be concerned about. You don't want it. Max at the arc, the perimeter passing. He gets it back at the foul line. Max, Swish. A nice little step around as defender created that spot 15 feet from the basket and made a nice jump shot. 14, 12 o'clock is trailing by two. A minute or so left in the first period. Millis, good reverse. That could be a kick. It's a travel first. And after beating the uh, the press, unforced error. Sean Page Sean had Page. a good idea there, but yeah, he just, extra step. It caught up in it a little bit. And a new player for the clock as we see Spencer Rabideau for the first time tonight. Spencer's wearing 21. Porter. A bomb. Well, had Cam his, had that Cam one. Cam had that, but uh, just couldn't control it. Another he's layup. That, he's that sneak away, that free basket. That is, that's his forte. That's his third basket. Two of them of that variety. Hustle baskets. Boudreau again. In and out. And follow your shot. Paul Boudreau, very, very active, taking all of Ashland's shots, it seems. The last half of this first period. Down the lane, Van Cleef. Nice finish, Chris. Right to the hole. Off Burris. the backwood straight away. Looking, looking, looking. Always looking this Burris ball. Yeah. Uh, Bob. Yeah. Takes it and makes it. Give that to Justin Wong. His first hoop of the night, I think. His yeah. first shot of the first night. First shot. And a steal. Page on the sneak away. Time runs out. Clock is fortunate. But they're yeah. still trailing five here at the end of one. 19 to 14. Well, Ashland left at least six points uh, off the boards by missing uh, shots that they should have made when they got to the rack. Millis, on the other hand, uh, uh, three or four easy baskets on breakaways and lay-ins uncovered virtually by the Ashland team. Ashland uh, needs to play a little bit better on defense, get back a little bit, and finish when they get to the rim on the offensive end. Millis had no threes, right? No threes. We had one. One three. W were all their baskets layups? Did they make any free throws? Uh, they did. They did. Uh, Kevin Carrizio had two. 
trying to remember a jumper of some kind. I can't. I know some of the layups were contested, and, and many of them weren't. But I don't remember anything from as far away as no. the free throw line. Well, they had a, they had a, a, a jumper on the elbow, but that's about it. That's about it. No, Ash and uh, could and should and uh, hopefully will be in this game if they uh, if they take care of business defensively. They played uh, good hustle defense, Bob, but they've had a, a couple of lapses uh, on breakaways. They need to protect the back line. I'll say this uh, with. Uh, Chris Van Cleef, uh, Mitch Porter, uh, Lubega. Clarkers have some interchangeable parts. They do. And uh, on the front line with Rabadou and uh, uh, Paul Boudreau and uh, John Van Cleef, yeah. Clarkers have some interchangeable parts, though. So they do. It gives Coach Champagne some flexibility on substitution. I haven't seen that on the Miller's side yet. And there's a new player right there, five. So maybe as the game goes on, there's a block. Nice, uh, nice block there by Mike Boudreau. Sega Desai is number five for the Mohawks into the game. Rabadou in trouble. Wants to go base, lost the ball, but it was tipped out of bounds. Well, Ashley, and, uh, when the coach said they're trying to find their identity, uh, I, I can see what he means. They've got uh, a nice-looking group of athletes, but they just don't seem to have that that uh, identity yet that uh, leads to cohesion, at least to consistency. Give him time. It's early in the season. And had to take it. Yeah, a little too much standing around by his teammates. Good, strong, strong move. Two-foot shot by Wong. He's got two in a row, and the Mohawks like it, and they've opened up a seven-point lead. Yeah, coach, uh, coach wants to talk to his players about this. At, at the offensive end, Ashley and standing around. I don't see much cutting to the basket, Bob. I don't see much inside play. Yeah, but they've been able to get to the rim when they've had a chance to. On the other end, uh, I think if I was calling the timeout, I might talk about that a little bit, but I'd probably talk more about at the defensive end. They really haven't worked as hard as they need to on a defensive end. And you look at that, Bob, you know, a lot of uh, players with JV primarily last year getting their first real varsity taste as well. Players like uh, uh, Lubega and Kyle Booth right. and uh, Mitch Porter and Spencer Rabadou and TJ Braun uh, really didn't get any significant varsity time last year, if any. Yeah, and the same thing. Every year, Bob, you... You, uh, you change out uh, players, and you wonder how, how well you'll do. They have to grow into the roles. And JV players moving up to varsity, it's a little intimidating at first, even though you practice every day with these kids. You need a couple games under yeah, your belt. You need, You're right. You need a little bit of experience. And it is a faster game. And they are bigger at this level. And they are older. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it takes a couple games. But, you know, you, it's basketball. No matter what, it's basketball. Villa's still in that 1-2-2 uh, two, two defense. Paul Boudreau bringing it up with Mitch Porter. Rabadou takes it in strong and gets two. That's a nice strong Spencer move. Rabadou. And that's how to attack that. Get to the back line on a wing. Go to the hoop. Desai looks vulnerable with the ball. Let's see if they uh, double him somewhere along the line. Akapov, he's uh, not looked well from the outside. He's, he's the scorer. Boudreau boys bring it up this time. They're both beyond the arc. This is Michael. Now Rabideau has it. He likes to go to the hoop, but they've got him doubled, and he's in trouble. He's not a ball handler, and he gives it up. Uh, he was uh, in jail there. Yeah. Strong to the hoop. The only way to do it, body defense by Porter. No hands up, and it didn't work. That guy is a JV player, a freshman, actually. Huh. Dom Zon, uh, Zon Freddy is his name, Bob. Number Freddy? 21 tonight. Well, he looked confident there. The other freshman uh, is P.J. Adams, and he's wearing 14 for the uh, Mohawks tonight. Yeah. Nice to get in the game. Nice to get a hoop. Yeah, I think with the other boy going down with those two fouls, it forced uh, the coach's hand. First-year coach, by the way. His uh -huh. name is Paul Adams. He looks familiar. Yeah, he's been around for a while. Was he um, maybe a JV or some other school? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know where we've seen him, but we've seen him. Don't we? Doesn't he look familiar? Yeah, he, he looks does. like a basketball coach. He might have been one of the Celtic assistants. Could be. 
Paul Boudreau draws the foul. Makes the first. And again, to Ashland, a chance to get to the rack, and uh, Paul drew the foul, but that was one that uh, a strong move to the hoop. You know, he, he, as, the, as the season goes along, he'll be finishing those and making the uh, attempt for a three-point play. There it is. Coach. Paul comes through, Trapping pressing Ashland trap. Defense. And and he a, throws it away. Forced turnover. Can't say the trap had anything to do with it. It was just a bad pass, but to Cy gives Ashland the ball again. It's, uh, it's always beating the press, that second pass. That's the critical one. And that was uh, Errant. The clock is still down five. Feinberg not getting the ball enough, I'll say really that. Really hasn't touched the ball in the second period yet. You know, so let's give... Uh, I guess we got to give the defense of Arkansas well, some credit, credit too. Yeah. But they need, they're playing his own now. I mean, a man now, so they need to. Oh, my God. Front Long, rim. long three. Very long. Max, the pull up three. Uh uh. Boudreaux had it, got knocked off the ball. It's Millis' ball. Yeah, and Ashland now settling for the long outside jumpers, and uh, they, they're even setting up their offense, so there is nobody deep, so there's not going to be a rebound. Max looks a lot bigger to me, too, this year. Yeah. Looks well, more solid. More mature. He played some football. Yeah, he's a sure big Coach part McKay of the, had him in the uh, football in the season. Room. As was Porter, was the quarterback. Uh, Max was a receiver. Rabideau, I think, was a linebacker. Looks like a linebacker. It's good to see the football play. Francis Lobega had a big year as well. Uh, a good athlete. Football, a three ball. Uh uh. Nice set play, but that's a long way away in the corner. That's a tough three for anybody. He rushed it just a tad, Van Cleef did. Yeah, good hustle like we talked about, Bob, but they really, I haven't seen him go to the rack for a while. I like to see Van Cleef, Chris Van Cleef. Do some pressure defense. He looks like a, he could be a real pain on defense. Uh, he's quick. Over the top, beautifully, but an air ball. Long, nice rebound. But Joe uh, tracks it down ahead to Max across the 10 second line. They get it to Van Cleef. He's bottled up. Max is open for a long three, turns it down, takes it in the lane, couldn't finish, but he'll uh, shoot two. To, to my earlier point, that works. Uh, Max could have been called for a little bounce step there. They didn't. And uh, made his way to the hoop, drew the foul. They're in the penalty anyway, but uh, he gets two. Oh, no. Everyone wears different sneakers now, Bob. Yeah, they all have different sponsors. Yeah. Max is seven, seventh point. I wore the uh, Converse. Chuck Taylor's? No, I had the Bob Cousy. And the Cousy's? With the distinctive green sole. You didn't have the Dr. J uh, leathers? Or as Bob used to say, the distinctive green distinctive sole. The queen. <laughs> <laughs> Max makes both looking good at the line, and they, they got to get the hand, his hands on the ball offensively. It's a three ball yeah, by Akapov. He looked very comfortable. That time, uh, plenty of time just stepped into it. Yeah. Still you a flat shot. You can't leave him that alone, I guess. No. Anybody. Paul Boudreaux is too long. Van Cleef loses the rebound to three Mohawks. Mohawks have a six-point lead trying to add. But there's that pesky Chris Van Sleek Chris, getting Chris Van Cleef uh, getting good, good, good quicks. I like to see uh, Coach Champagne turn him loose on the point guard, but I, I can't I can't identify a point guard on either team, Bob. Yeah, I think this is. Uh, is it point guard by committee? point by committee? Yeah. Well, I think I think Chris uh, should be the guy that chases. He's uh, he's quick and he puts good pressure on the ball. Ashland playing the man defense, pretty much sticking with Boudreau man. Draw on Burris. Feinberg. <coughs> Down the lane, the beautiful dish. Just a nice, nice pass. Carusio finishes. There's a play made by uh, a point guy that time. Max a three, no. Nice rebound by Mike Boudreau. An open Van Cleef, he wouldn't take it, but that's Max, not Max's problem. Max contact, but no call, but he made the basket anyway. Nice one step into the lane and a floater. 
He just looks very comfortable offensively. He elevates Bob. Yep. So there's no challenging his shots. You had that back one. If you got the ups, use the ups. You, you could hang. Akapov, one hand push off the backboard. That's that's a very mature basket from that position. He's got several moves, Bob. Yeah. Several things he does well. Blocking foul. Campana Sends makes it into the basket, but uh, I'd like to see him do more of that. It's it's blue collar, but it works. He draws the foul and it's on Caruso. That's his third. So even though he's had a monster first half offensively, he's got to sit again. Well, he's done for the half. I'd say about 3.12 to go. Yeah. Here's the clock, his chance to get back in it. They're down eight. Like to get a little closer to by halftime. May not be able to make it all up, but well, Cam we'll Faneff is taking a big step in the right direction and another free throw to come. Uh-uh, uh-uh, and there's the rebound. Goes to Ryan Smith, who's 33. Burris is 20. Akapov is four. He's obviously the player to watch. 23 is Wong, and what is that, 21? Or? Yeah, Zinfredi, the, uh, the JV, uh, would you say he was a freshman? He's one? actually a freshman, freshman but a yeah. JV player. He's made some nice passes. He's done a nice job with the point. Fan of the steal. Max looking up. Oh, ooh, he keeps it in. Lucky Ball to... found that just in time. The pesky Mohawks, Rubega, they couldn't take advantage of that saved ball. Clock's still running, 15 seconds. Not no time to panic, but Ashen seems to... Very tight defense, Paul. Yeah, oh, what defense. a nice move, Paul Boudreaux. He couldn't finish. Oh, Ashen, two players had their hands on it. Akapov, coast to coast. Got too far Took away. Took himself from a the, bad angle yeah. there. Yeah, got too far away from yeah, that Yeah, he seems to, that's one thing I, I pick on his game, but he doesn't like contact, apparently. Max back rim. Gets Max, it himself. A long time before that ball got picked up by anybody, Max said, let me go get it. There's a long the middle's rebound. wide open, Bob. Yeah. Still is. Cam doesn't even look. Nobody's going there, though. Max behind the back, elevates. Uh-uh. LaBega battles. They couldn't get and it. Here come the again, Hawks. They had their hands on the ball, but just couldn't control it. Ashton losing some opportunities. Burris wants to settle things down, and yeah. Coach Paul Adams says, let's talk it over with a timeout. Yeah. His team up seven with 1-4-6 to go until halftime. I, I'm hoping we have a halftime show by the Ashland well, cheerleaders. So. But it would have to be on that mat over there, Bob, because... To be safe? Well, I don't think they allow the uh, the pyramids oh. and, the, and the, the things we used to see. I missed them. At halftime. Yeah, I missed and, them. Yeah. And even during timeouts, now they the do cheerleaders things like, would uh, typically perform Yeah, they'd run on out the, the floor, floor and yeah. they'd pick up all the little yeah. streamers from their pom-poms. I don't see any pom-poms either. How, can you be a cheerleader without pom-poms? I don't know. Yeah, they do something. They shake their fists at us or something like that. Coach Allie Jenkins, though, instructing, instructing, uh, just new to the job, and she'll do a fine job. Ashland, Bobby, uh, I think uh, they, they get the benefit of the timeout by Millis. If I was the Millis coach, I would have let them play. Things were going their way. Ashland uh, somewhat disorganized, and Millis not much better, but they were, uh, they, were, they were taking care of business and had the ball. I'm not sure what Coach Adams wants to talk to him about, but... When you get the momentum going your way, why call a timeout? Yeah, I wonder what, something was bothering him there. Everything yeah. was going pretty well. Yeah. Burris had everything under control. He was he was just walking it up. He's he walked it across the 10 second yeah. line. Nashan wasn't uh, making up the deficit, but still at seven, so. Whatever, Mark Champagne will take it. He gets a free time to uh, talk to his team. Maybe it was a fatigue issue. He wants uh, more rest for his players. Well, he's basically figuring his bench isn't so. too deep, yeah. Akapov dishes. Oh, freshman not afraid to take the jump shot. Oh, he got it just where he wanted to, but he couldn't get it to go. Another new player, Ryan Smith. Good position, good layback, but didn't get it to go down. Ashton just too far away from the basket. Oh, they need more of that. Couldn't get it. LaBega acrobatically stuffs at home. But it won't count. There'll be free throws, I think. Yeah, Paul Boudreaux again to the rim, no finish through the foul, and that, that's that's admirable. But you you got to finish. Hoping to creep closer with 1:12 to go until halftime. 
Millis 30, Ashland 23, Bob Thacker, Bob Martell. And a cast of thousands here at Ashland High School. Two days before Christmas, December 23rd, 2014. The Clockers and the Mohawks. Paul makes the first one. That one creeps over the front rim. And he has different sneakers. You're right, Bob. No team sneakers this year. These are blue. Blue, and I see baby blue. Yeah. And makes, a, makes a better I see navy second. blue, yeah. royal blue. I tell you, they all have sneaker deals. <coughs> we should get a deal. Yeah. Announcer shoes. Announcer shoes. I guess. Right Max. into Max's left arm extended. Watch out here. Oh, what a move by Zod Freddy. Steal back and steal back. Uh, that was payback. Max had a had a one-on-two break and didn't see the uh, the little point guy sneaking up on him. Zod Freddy, nice job. Ends up with the steal. Good hustle play. Not only stopped the play, got the ball. Burris saw an opening, took it. Mysteriously bounced out, but he uh, he gets uh, free throws. Both teams in the penalty now. Block uh, Chris Van Cleef, but it could have been a charge, too. I guess that would have been free throws either way. Yeah. If you're wondering, Mills has nine fouls uh, this half, and Ashland has seven. Ashland's uh, first foul for quite a while, though. They've been playing clean defense, which a little bit, uh, I want to see him play a little bit more gritty. Well, I have to say this. Carter Burst had a lot of confidence in that free throw. It yeah. was completely unwarranted. <laughs> the next one he swishes. Well, home. maybe that's why he's used to making them. Yeah. That was an aberration. It was so nonchalant. It was, it was so cool, but not close. I think using Max as the, as the point guard may be a little bit ambitious. Let him be the first uh, he option. He takes it. It's no good. Yeah, he's, that, he's out of the play after that first pass, Bobby, and uh, he should be a first offensive option. Yeah, and I don't think they're pressing that hard. No, oh, there's a nice rebound by Max. That's Max's move. He elevates. It's contested that time and gets the foul. Adams, Coach Adams thought it was clean. Well, that's, that's teable right there. He tossed his paper up in the air. That's... Should have been a technical. Automatically, he claims that the paper escaped from his hand. Feinberg trying to get the clock as close as they trail six. There's just 15 seconds left until halftime. There's the good first one. Lead cut to five. Let's see if Ashland full court presses out of this free throw. He makes it. Max Lead cut to four. A dozen uh, first half points for Max. No pressure by Ashland. Token pressure, I should say. Yeah. A man-to-man -man defense in effect. Clock under five. Good defense. Burris gives it up to the guy. And we're going to shoot three. Oh. The inexperienced Francis Lubega makes a bad foul. Right at the buzzer. And he's going to get three. A good, free throws. A good player with three free throws. Arkhipov suckering Lubega that time, you'd have to say. It was not a good shot either. No, no. He was too far out. It wasn't going. Tough break for Francis. Trying to play tough defense. And giving up points like this. Yeah. There's no time on the clock. This is tough, too. It's, uh, you're standing at the line by yourself yeah. at the Ashland end. Yeah, the wrong kid. Can't we drill kick. both of these? This, is a, this shows a lot of uh, a lot of class and uh, capability. He gets makes, them all. Makes the trifecta. Just like that, it's seven point lead for the Mohawks at halftime, and a good first half is in the book, and it's going to be a great second half. It's coming up in ten seconds. You're watching Ashland High School Varsity Sports on WACA TV, Ashland Television. You're watching WACA TV. Well, Bob, ready to start up the second half. Millis uh, leads this game by seven, 34-27. Top scorers in the first half for Millis. Akapov with 14, and uh, Kevin Caruzio with uh, 10 points and also with three fouls. Uh, the only one that was uh, in jeopardy. So he played limited in the first half, but still managed 10 points. That's 24 out of 34 yeah. for Millis. And for Ashley and Max Feinberg with a dozen, and Paul Boudreaux with seven, 19 of the 27 points between those two players. Ashlyn uh, needs to finish and needs to prevent the, uh, the the breakaway baskets. This could be a ball game, Bob. 
I'd like to see team play with everyone contributing. Well, Thacker with the second half action. Robega gets the start. It's into Boudreaux. He short arms it. Again, a sneak away burst this time. Lobega fouls him hard. You know, this is an example of just what we talked about. Ashland feeling to convert on the offensive end, doesn't get back on the back end, back end of that, and Lobega has to foul to prevent the basket, and uh, it's going just like the first Paul, half. How, uh, Bob, how is that done? Do you release on the shot? Yeah, if, if you're if you're the top man in the Millis offense, uh, when the ball goes up, you start looking to run down the court. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you're Ashland, you got to rotate somebody up top because it's apparent they're doing that. Someone has to have that responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. Two free throws. It's a nine-point lead to start the second half with seven. Clark has had it down to four, but three free throws at the buzzer, buzzer by the Mohawks made it a seven-point halftime lead. And the Mohawks get the first two points of the second half. So it's 36 for Millis and Ashland is 27. And, uh, the crew got a nice spread uh, provided courtesy of the Marathon Market and Delhi. Very so nice. Thank you very much to them for taking care of our boys and girls tonight. We'll bring this game to you on WACA TV. Oh, Marathon, a, uh, a mainstay in Ashland. And they moved from the Ashland and Hopkinson line closer to downtown, and I think it's only helped their business. Uh, everything's fabulous there. Feinberg. Except the waistline. Well. To Paul Boudreaux. Faneuf, who took that one? It's, uh, that was Michael. Faneuf stuffed. Up and in. Cam Faneuf stayed yeah, with it. Good tenacity there. Ashland uh, has, to, has to have more of that. 36-29. Mohawks hold a seven-point advantage over the clockers. Just underway here in the third period. Ashland sticking with the man defense. Clockers in their home white. The Mohawks in their visiting dark red. Burris. Into the, into the uh, jungle I don't, right I don't there. know what happened there. One second. It's good if it goes. It's in and out. Tip in. Tip the tip. second one goes. What a play. We Caruso. don't see too many of that. Caruso sticking with the two tips there, both uh, between, sandwiched between Ashland players. Not a lot of tippins in the TVL. No. Bob, can't fan yeah. if uh, defended by Caruso there and couldn't get to the rim. Caruso now with nine point difference because uh, 12 and Ar Arkapov with 14. Wow. A yeah, little more effective. Uh, play by Millis to Ashland. Clark is Marginal, moving the ball it's... now, moving the ball. He's open, he wouldn't take it, and he threw it away. Yeah. Those are Actually, he got right through Francis. I won't say that one was thrown away. Well, not much difference in the level of play between these two teams, Bob, but just Millis uh, taking advantage of their opportunities, and Ashland not. Nine-point nine differential. Didn't want to see this coming out of the locker room. No, and you hate to see Millis with all this confidence, Bob, too, you know? Yeah. Well, it's our gym. Nice step in there. Great defense by Ashland. Let's credit Mike Boudreaux on yeah, that. They never got past the free throw line. Good defense. Porter to Max. Porter's open at the arc. He takes it. No arc. Lubega had the rebound and got hammered. Well, Ashland more, more active uh, going to the offensive boards now. Glad to see Porter shoot. Uh, you know, you'd like to see a little more arc on that shot. You'd like yeah. to see it squared up a little better. But he, he cannot be a non-shooter. No, he had a good look and uh, take the shot. He cannot be a non-shooter. Max, too long. Nice rebound. Porter gives it up. Max takes it down the lane. He's fouled and it doesn't go. Well, I, you've heard me say this before. I like that better than that long jump shot. He's a good shooter, no doubt about it. But that's just so much more effective. Well, you got to take a few in order for the fake to work. Yeah. And now uh, Akapov with <coughs> his third. So Akapov with three. Carizio with three. Jackson Vera with three for Millis. They uh, haven't distributed their fouls very much, and three of their key players in a little bit of foul trouble early here in the third period. Oh, what a nice cut. Couldn't get it to go. This won't go down. Nice move. Nice pass. Just didn't go in. Essence had the rim on 
uh, the, the lid on the rim a few times tonight. Oh, sweet doesn't go. LaBega with a good D. Good no call. He, uh, he gave himself up for that one. I didn't see a foul either way on that one, Bob. No, that was a good no call. Paul Boudreaux and Mitch Porter playing catch beyond the arc. Now it comes inside, a little fall away. Oh, bad luck. And again, down and down and out, Paul Boudreaux, a nice move. Oh, very hard pass, handled very nicely by Akapar, who turns and swishes a jumper. Sweet move. He's done a nice job of making uh, shots when he is in trouble. He made the three free throws at the end of the first half. Does oh, a sweet Hawks move. have their biggest lead, Bob. Yeah. Uh, 11 points, Bob, as they've gone from 7 to, to 11, not even halfway through this third period. And again, uh, Millis making uh, making their advantages count, and Ashton not being able to finish. Ashton's already missed three uh, three inside shots that they should have finished on. Jeez, they were in and out, though, weren't they? Yeah. They were down. Yeah, yeah. It seems, uh, I don't know, doesn't it seem like it's always contagious? It they is. either all go or they don't yeah. go. It doesn't matter which player. But Ashland uh, has to keep keep going to the rim, keep looking for second opportunities. And Millis four team fouls, Ashland one. That that works in Ashland's favor, and three of their key players from Millis in foul trouble. And it's still early in the game, but uh, I'm I'm just a little worried that I don't think Feinberg has had a second off. No, yeah, well he's he sat for just a little bit in the Did first he? half, just a little bit, yeah. but. Uh, uh, he virtually played the whole game, and he's he's now uh, trying to do a, a lot. He's playing the point. He's playing lead man on defense. He's trying to carry the offense. And the Boudreaux have been staying out there too, Mike and Paul. Yeah. Well, Mitch Porter in the game, and uh, hopefully he can help with the point duties and give Max uh, a little bit of a break. Max is not too, too not, long and too lazy. He's not naturally a point guy. Good two. He's a great two. Akapov to Wong, and Wong couldn't get it to go, but a nice idea. Nice get back by Mike Boudreau there. Good defense. Rubega very steady now on the D. Michael up. It just won't go down. Again, a nice move. Gets a simple free. move all by himself there. And just a little strong. Backboard rim and out. And they're giving you those. You know... Uh, Caruso isn't interested in fouling, so no. they, you know, no. just put it in, just lay it in. You know, coach is looking at the stats at all. He's going to play inside the rest of the game. Nice free throw by Michael Boudreaux. You stop the clock. Uh, you get their players in foul trouble. You slow down their offense by doing that inside game. We're in the third period, 4:16 to go. Clock is trail 10. Mike Boudreaux with one more free one. Coaxes at home. Those are Mike's uh, first points, if you can believe it. He's played a nice game defensively. He's had the ball a lot. LaBega tries to step in. You no, know, nice, nice takeaway, but he, uh, the call. he was already at the sideline, so out it's of bounds. got to be off of him, I would think. Yeah, he stepped on the line. But a nice hustle play on his part. Burris in bounds. Uh, there's that. <laughs> Off balance foul. Geez, the other freshman's in, Bob. That's uh, yeah. P.J. Adams, 14. Yeah. P.J. much smaller than uh, than Paul Boudreau. He put the brakes on, and Paul kind of enveloped him. Coach Adams going to call another timeout. Ashland brings it back to nine points with the uh, with the free throws. Uh, Coach Adams using his free. He's using his timeouts, Bob. He got five per game. Yeah. And uh, he's already used three. He's got two left. Clockers have three left. Mike Champagne, Coach Champagne looks a little beside himself over there. The other coach is doing the talking. Coach Champagne pacing. Choosing his words wisely. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he's unhappy with the effort or the execution or both. Well, I think he's, uh, you're always teaching, but uh, when, when you go into a huddle like that, and, and you've probably already made uh, the players aware of what they need to do to be successful, uh, how do you say it a different way and, and get it through to them to get them to change their pattern? I mean, Ashland, Ashland, this whole game hasn't played much differently than Millis. They trail by nine, though, because they haven't done the little things. And they've had uh, they've had a cold night uh, close in, Bob. They've missed a lot of layups that have been in and out. A couple of those balls have been uh, down in the rim and, and popped out. 
That never happened to you, so you don't identify with it. You always found the bottom of the net. <laughs> Good defense here. Oh, Burris couldn't handle it. LaBega has it. Clockers get the steal. Ahead to Porter. And that's what they need. Good Gives sustained up his defense. Dribble. Max down the lane. Beautifully can't get it to go. Again, uh, no finish. Caruso clears. When Max isn't finishing, you're... you're P.J. Uh, Adams, you're a future point guard apparently on the Mohawks. Just a freshman, but pressed into service yeah, tonight. The two freshmen have played uh, played good point. P.J. I don't know if he's a relative of the coach. Against Porter. Lobega comes out. They double him. Five, Five second seconds. Violation. Again, good sustained defense. He had no way to go with that one. Ashley just hasn't been able to take advantage of their good defense. Guess you could call it a freshman mistake if you have to. Yeah, good. I, I call it good sustained defense. But yes, uh, unaware that five second rule, you got to have that mental clock going in your head. Boudreaux to Porter quickly to Max inside pass. Caruso picks it off. Yeah, Up to Burris. Oh. They get it back to the point guard, Adams, and he's got, who's he got on him? Paul Boudreaux. Baseline drive doesn't work out. Adams pulls it back out again. Now Porter's on him. They swing it. Ryan into Clarusio up and under, but he got fouled with three seconds left on the shot clock. And I believe that's Francis' fourth foul. Oh, he's picking them up in bushels, isn't he? Well, he's playing hard underneath, yeah. and uh, he's, he's picking up the uh, the loose players that are coming through and trying to play defense. Uh, it, it's I guess it's that's his that, responsibility. Well, isn't he's it? Yeah. yeah, he's the last line of defense, and he's he's got ups and he's uh, athletic. Sometimes uh, you're the guy that, that creates the foul because somebody else didn't cover them in. Here comes Fanafin for Paul Boudreaux. And I guess Christian Van Cleef comes in for Francis Lobega, hard to say. Looks like a, I guess. Oh, he's open, what a block! Nice. Mike Boudreau, and now here he comes. Feinberg. Inside the Van, Van Cleef. Van of Rather. Steal back. Oh, what a play. And there we go. Mike Boudreau. Mike Boudreau. Both ends of the court for Mike Boudreau. We're going to travel. And there's all of a sudden that momentum shift. Ashland has cut the lead to seven. A lot of hard work, little effort, I mean, little result. But they're, they're trying. No lack of trying, Bobby. Corusio sits. Hits the bench for the Mohawks. Here's a chance for Ashland. It should open things up underneath. Boudreau strong. Fouled. He'll shoot. Yeah, Michael anticipating the contact, and it came, but uh, had his head down and fired that ball over the back rim. Justin Wong, his third foul. Sixth on Billis, only three on Ashland. Mike, I'd say, coaxed, coaxed that one home. He's, uh, he's had five points this period, Bob, after being shut out in the first half, so his Sean, hustle paying off on the offensive end this quarter. Sean Page going to get a chance. Going to get another chance. Played a lot in the first half. He's number three for the Mohawks. Adams, P.J. goes out. Fight for the boards. Who's got it? Mike Boudreau, and he couldn't get it. The tip in didn't go, but I think we're going to see some more free throws. Well, Ashley and hustle, hustle, hustle to the offensive board. Max will be rewarded with a trip to the line. Swish. And if you can believe it, Bob, that's Max's uh, first points of the second half. With 2.10 left. Those are important free throws. They're all important. Down to a, a four-point deficit. Ashland got to keep that, uh, that defensive intensity. Let's see if Akapov tries to take over here. With Caruso on the bench. Underneath another pass. Ryan uh, wasn't ready. Maybe one pass too many. Ryan Smith, I should say, was not ready. Number 33. 
Oh, there's a move. He finally takes it and misses the shot. Faneff clears. Faneff, a nice clear. Ahead to Porter. Couldn't find an opening. Feinberg down the lane. Looked like a pass. Yeah, a lot of contact there. And the fouls are piling, piling up for Millis. That's Max goes points. right to the line as he should, but technically, Bob, that was not a shot. No, that's uh, that pass was heading towards yeah, the corner. It was heading to the corner, but that's uh, four on Arkapar. He couldn't resist. Colucio goes in, and, he, uh, and Smith comes out. Arkapar comes out. Trying to work Akapov and uh, Caruzio and uh, preserve their, their playing time, but they've got seven fouls between them. As, as we know, it's five fouls and you're out of the game in high school basketball, in college. Six in the pros. Bad pass. Ashland ball. Max Clockers with a chance. What? Max. <laughs> Max incredulous. He thought that call went the other way. Getting an explanation. Max 7 for 8 from the free throw line. Mitch Porter to inbound. Millis not defending. Mike Boudreau gets it. Mitch gets it back. They get it in the high post. Down the baseline. Couldn't get it. Goose that it. Matt Cam Faneff. Cam Faneff finishes on the miss. That was Damn a, determined. It was a bad enough miss that nobody from Millis was able to get to it. And Full Ashland, court pressure. Ashland without a point, within a point, Bob. Fox get it across the 10 second line. Page tricky dribbles. Makes a pass. They look for a cutter. Caruso's going to do it alone and bank it home. He's a strong player. You can see something like that coming from him. Clockers work it inside again. Coricio steals it, but what happened? A little push there. What, in the rebounding? Well, I, I think missed he, that. I was blocked yeah. by the official. I think it was uh, Cam. Who'd they give it to, Cam? Yeah, a yeah. little bit of a push, uh, maybe frustration, trying to get back at the ball. But let's actually set up their press. And it's only got, the fourth foul. Bill says fouls. eight. Yep. Clockers have two more to give before the penalty. Burris under pressure by Porter. Gets across the timeline, gives up his dribble on the cut to Sean Page, and then he, he dishes it to Justin Wong, who finishes. That's a nice play. The lead is back up to five for Millis. Christian Van Cleef brings Ashland back, and they almost had a steal. Stays Mohawk ball. Well, this is what we expected, Bob. Uh, 27 seconds left in the third period. Mills 44, Ashland 41. Millis ball in their own backcourt. Mills just hanging on, but with uh, with Akapov and, and Carizio in trouble, it's it's uh, like they don't have relief pitching. Page, one man show the running right hander. Oh. He got that's, fouled. That's a ticky tack right there. Yeah, it might have been a hand foul, but they give it to Christian Van Cleef. I haven't seen John Van Cleef tonight, Bob. I wonder if he's hurt. Yeah, I don't know. He uh, usually plays. He played a lot last year yeah. for the uh, for this for the Tri Valley League champions. John Page uh, looking a little rusty at the free throw line that time. He doesn't have a point, and that was his first first attempt, I think. And it was from the free throw line. A lot of concentration now, and he doesn't get the second one. Mauricio reaches over the top. No he doesn't get there. it. That could have been a foul. And 15, 14, he took a chance, 22. I thought, Bob. Yeah, he's... Uh, when you don't even have the position, you know, and yeah. you're still reaching over. Max knocked down. Max foul. Who'd they give it to, Double Page? Double penalty. I think uh, they give it to Page, I'm guessing, yeah. On Page. His second. And Max back to the line. 12.5 seconds left. And is this a one-on-one, -on -one, Bob? Max has a, uh, his nine, so it's a one-on-one -on -one yeah. opportunity. Make the first, you get the second. Miss the first, and the ball is live. Here we go. Feinberg, a cool customer. Brings the clockers to within two. 12 and a half seconds left in the third period. Max eight for nine now from the line. Within one, Nine they come. 
Nine out of ten is a good percentage. Mohawks looking for the last shot of the third period. Having trouble getting it across the line. They do. Don't He's going to take it and miss it. It was good if it went. But Desai couldn't coax it home. And the third period comes to an end with the score. Millis 44 and Ashland 43. What was the halftime score, Bob? It was 34-27. Uh, so they were down seven. And Millis actually went up 11, I believe, at one point. That Bob. was the high watermark, 40-29. Yeah. to 29 yeah. and then, memory uh, serves. Ashland finishes winning that period 16-10 as uh, Millis in foul trouble. Ashland, uh, that relentless pressure, and finally got a few baskets to go. They still probably can't be very, very happy with their shooting percentage, Bob, or their ability to finish at the hoop. But uh, that period, three, five, eight free throws uh, made out of that's, that's eight of their 16 points are from the line. As Millis, uh, you know, they, they're, they're thin. I think after their first uh, two or three players, and two of them are in, in foul trouble. Uh, they're, they're struggling, and it. You've got them. What do you got them for? Four and three. Yeah, I got uh, Ivan Akapov has four, and Caricio has three. One, three. Jackson Vera, three. So they've got um, they've got a delicate balancing act for the next eight minutes to try to keep their key players in the game. Any of the clockers with three? Uh, only Francis Lubega with, with four. four fouls. Nobody Not else has more game. than two. Carter Burris bringing it up. Desai in trouble. They swing it nicely. Zon Freddy, the freshman, is into the game. 21. Desai, shot clock at four. Zon Freddy. Makes the big, big pass to Wong for the easy bucket. Uh, with what, two seconds left? That was. Uh, I have to say, he saw what I didn't see. Uh, uh, there's Max, uh, unforced error. That's How right. he saw that opening and threaded that pass perfectly. Nice, uh, nice timing at the last second there. It's on Freddy. I know. Actually, Usually you, you just get the, you just throw it up. You're so afraid of the clock, the shot clock winding down on you. Ashland needs to keep this defensive pressure up. It'll pay dividends, and they're also uh, it'll be in a double bonus next foul. Wait. Good defense clock shot already at 12. Watch that cut now. Here's the cut. Caruso couldn't find any opening. Good defense. Burris takes it in with four seconds, and the clockers have it. Yeah, that's great defense. Mike Boudreaux with the steal ahead to Mitch Porter. Paul Boudreaux, swish! Nice two, one foot over the line. Clock is back within one. Paul's first points of the second half. He's got nine in the game. He's on Freddie, the heady freshman. Uh, he, he doesn't look uh, no, overmatched at all. Doesn't look too callow, does he? No. Oh, Caruso worked it. It didn't have real good he really control did a nice of the job ball. Protecting it, but just didn't have enough ups left to finish that play. And Ashland uh, gets the ball down one point. Ashland hasn't, I don't think, had a lead in this game, Bob. Arkhipov back into the game with 6:21 to go. Yeah, I think the coach's next foul ends the night for him. Is, if I was uh, Ashland, he'd put the ball in somebody's hands and go right to the hoop. Whoever's got him. Oh, he's uh, staying outside, Bob. Look he's, at this. He's putting him up top to try yeah. to protect him. Caruso and Son Freddy with the steal. Dominic gives it up. Burris running the show now, Bob, so it yeah. seems, huh? Yeah. Number he's 20. Nice nice solid job playing the point. Lobega is done for the night. And that will uh, disqualify Francis, who played a, a, a nice hustle game. Did his job, played physical. Played tough. Chased, chased on defense. Got a hoop. It's in the scorebook offensively, too. That brings Fanef in. With 5-5-3 five, five, left to go in the contest, and the clock is trailing by one. They try to nice get it in play. to Caruso. Nice job that time by Chris Van Cleef to step in. He really had a reach without, without fouling. Fanef. 
to Paul Boudreaux, who lost his dribble, and it stayed, no, ultimately they lost it out of bounds. The Boudreaux boys yeah. just couldn't connect. Had his man beat and just lost the ball. That yeah, he lost his dribble, right, Yeah, Paul? it happens. Actually, good defense. Wong with just a minute's moment's hesitation. He's on Freddy. Low to the ground. Sweet move by Akapa, but not this time. He uh, he floats sometimes. That that right right-handed runner is. Paul takes a long two back rim. Nice rebound. Fanif, no, oh, yeah, Fanif skied for that one. That was beautiful. Caruso has that one. Burris trying to it's set there. up. It's sitting there, Bob. Five minutes left. Uh, game's here for uh, for the taking. Ashton has to be real honest. Ready, likes to likes to drive and dish. Oh, pretty takeaway by yeah. Justin Wong. Wong in the face of the defense, uh, calmly elevated just enough to get it over the defender's hand. I think I meant follow. Max can't answer. Caruso fouled, no call. Nice one-handed rebound. And Ashton can't fall into the doldrums now. This might be a good time for a timeout for Coach Champagne if they uh, if they can't get a turn over here. Now, there's a foul underneath, and it's I believe on Caruso. I think it's on on Freddie. I'm so? not sure. Thought he said I heard him say 21. He was angry about it. Was, it is on on Freddie. Yeah. Right. Yep. Caruso was looking at him like, not me, please, not me. I was away from the ball, and I can't say I saw what happened. But the referee certainly did. And his coach Champagne calling that timeout. Good, uh, a good time to call a timeout. They got the ball. They're down by three. 4-12 to go. They just haven't been able to get over that, that uh, mark where they've, they've trailed by a point. They've had opportunities. I'm sure coach is talking about maintaining the defensive intensity and what players to attack. Yeah. Um, you have to still play basic basketball. You've got to box out. Yep. Caruso is a handful. You've oh, yeah. got to box him he's out. He's a big body. He's strong. and uh, You've got yeah. to box him out, and you've got to take the ball to him. Yep. He's got one in his pocket. He's only got three fouls. He's only got three. It's, uh, it's Akapov that's, uh, that's more in jeopardy. Yeah. And Akapov, they're protecting him, keeping him out here. Yeah, I think they. Uh, if you can get have into his face on a three, yeah. you might, you might coax a bad foul out of him and get rid of him. No, it'll be it'll be something like a, a reach or one of those. But you, you can't you can't play to try he's, to draw fouls. You have to be aware for it. He's pretty tr tricky. It would be hard to get a charge on him. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Clark is in the stack. They get it to Max. It is a quick foul on the freshman as he's overplaying. Wasn't much. Yeah, that's a double bonus too. That'll put that'll put Max back at the line. Yeah, he was up and under him, and that was on. Freddie's committed two bad fouls here. Yeah, you know, trying to be overly aggressive. Last one we did see, and it was just. Uh, softest of touches. Feinberg. Max the junior. Max uh, 10 for 11. Listed as six feet tall. Fanif and Boudreau listed as 6-2. Both Boudreaux listed at 6-2 and Fanif at 6-2. They're the tallest clockers on their roster. Yeah, they're not plus with uh, incredible height, but they've got a lot of players that are about that six feet, six two, and they hustle. Uh, as Caruso was uh, warding off with his left hand, and all of Max a sudden, gets Bob, with a touch foul, I, I, I with 3:55 to go, everything's a foul. I don't know where some of these are coming from, but on the other hand, if he calls them both ways, yes, as they are, it, it works to Ashton's advantage. That hasn't happened so far. How's this boy been from the line tonight, Bobby? Uh, not good. Not good. He's two for six. So he's been off. He makes that one. 
That looked like good form. Yeah, that time he had his head up. Sometimes you you play better uh, at, from the free throw line when you're fatigued. You go back to your form. When you're warm. He looked a little strong early, like he was too pumped. Give him two. That's both of those, and those are big. Four, Four points. points. Christian Van Cleef in the game. The follow away by Porter's an air ball. Freshman P.J. Adams working against his numerical counterpart, Mitch Porter. Freshman against the senior. Another timeout. Coach just seeing a little too much fiddling and diddling. And Actually, Mitch, Mitch is listed as a junior. I thought he was a senior. Yeah. Well, Ashton got within one, and uh, they've let the uh, the lead build to four again, Bob, this time. But they uh, they have to maintain their offensive uh, intensity. Geez, those fouls hurt when it's a double bonus, doesn't yeah, it, huh? Yeah. And now I mean, we, uh, didn't, we didn't even see the last two fouls, no. and they resulted in two points for each team. Yep. This foul here on, on Max. Yeah, I think so. It was right in uh, front of us. You call those sometimes accidents of birth. There was a... There was a foul, foul before on, uh, uh, I think it was on Boudreau, Mike Boudreau, because he was bigger than the other player. Yes. And that time there was a foul on the freshman because he was smaller than the other player. Caruso uh, went to the free throw line. And there was no noticeable anything. Now we'll see if Ashley uh, presses if they make a basket. And we'll see if Mills can get to the end with their... With their Two stars intact. Right now, uh, Akapov stuck at four fouls. And Carizio with three, 328 left. It doesn't look quite so dire for them. They managed uh, to get through this whole second half without. without uh, Coach Paul Adams has his two freshmen in. PJ and that's Dominic. Huh? They must, I think they probably played together growing up, and so he's confident they can play together here. Akapov. Tries to make a pass. It doesn't connect it. It rolled off. Fan if, but he ended up with it. All kinds of stuff happening there. Balls rolling off backs and many hands on the ball. Three minutes to go in the game. The clock is a down four. Jack Edwards says it's winning time. There's a hold on the freshman. Oh, that was nice. We needed that. Yeah, back cut by Max. Justin Warren, he mad at, I think, at himself. Yeah. Could be his fourth if it's uh, on him. That was uh, Zanfredi. They gave it to his third. Zanfredi. Max back to the free throw line. And, and this is a strength. If Ashley can march to the free throw line, they, they're, they're pretty good free throw shooters. Max trying to get the clockers within one possession. He does that. He's getting a lot of points from the free throw line tonight. 11 for 13. He's got 11 points from the free throw line. Good percentage. Almost all swishes. Ashen within two. Three, up, three minutes straight up. Adams against Porter. Bounce pass. Carusio wants to go. Wanted to make a pass. Blocked by Faniff. Hard move up and in and one. Cam Faniff. Great hustle play. Got the steal and then made the basket down the other end. The game is tied and Cam Phantom's at the line. 2.39 to go. Great hustle play uh, at one end and at the other and he draws the foul on Carizio. That's his fourth. Misses it, the game stays tied. Mike Boudreau stepped in for the rebound. Max bottled up. Phantom. Feinberg resets, 20 on the shot clock. Down the lane, too strong. Carusio skied for the board and got hacked. He had it. Yeah, Max, uh, that, that nice move to the left and then the right hand, it just didn't go down for him. And the get back foul. Carusio Can't holding it. it. Carusio might have like, popped in the nose there. He's, yeah. he's sniffling. 50 to 50, 2-2-2 two, two, two left in the game. First tie of the game since 0-0, uh, zero, zero, I think. Right? Wow. Uh-uh. 
That was a one on one, so he did not get the second free throw because he missed the first. Jump ball possession, Millis. Mohawks get a very, very lucky break there. They really did. Uh, Ashland had the ball possession with Caruso missing that free throw, you know? Yep. Ashland has to guard against a little cheap play here. Caruso loses the handle. Wow, Kim Fanoff, a nice move there. No call on, the, on the, the contact, which is nice. Clark is trying to take the lead for the first time in a long time. Here's Max. Max gets it. Max right. over 20 points now. Ashland by two. That always looked like a backcourt, too. Wong. Akapov can't get it to go. Who's got it? It's Ashland. Cam Faneuf. 1.45 to go as Feinberg walks it up across the 10 second line. 1.41 to go. Timeout somebody. Max, a nice game on 22 points now. And that was, uh, if you can believe it, Bob, his first basket of the second half. He's had. Um, Seven free throws, though. Eight free throws. He's had a lot me. of attempts that yeah. have rolled off. Yeah. Of course, when you foul, they do not count as attempts. 52 for Ashley and 50 for Millis. A buck 41 left to go in this one. Kind of a subtlety, Bob, but uh, Ashley is in the double bonus. So he'll get two free throws with every uh, transgression where Millis uh, won't. They, they, uh, it's, it's 18 fouls, so they're going to shoot one and one for two, for two more th uh, free throws. Well, you saw it was very important when uh, Caruso missed that yeah, missed free the throw. Free throw. They got bailed out by the possession arrow on the jump ball, but they couldn't convert that either. Well, it's now a matter of uh, don't take your pedal off the accelerator. Play, play that sustained good defense. Uh, keep going to the hoop. Don't change anything. Uh, you can't protect the two-point lead. It's basketball. 141 left. You, you play like you've been playing. I think you'll see Akapov down under again, Bob. Nothing yeah. much to save him for now no, when you're point, down two and there's only a minute 41 left in the game. No reason to save him. Michael doubled in the corner and gives up his dribble. Max opened a deep three. It's in! Max Feinberg gives Ashton a five-point lead. Now there's a shooter's roll. With the front rim just lazily flopped up there and over. That's a big hoop. Five point lead, Bob. Down to a minute and change. Akapov calls for it, gets it at the arc, wants to make a move, elevates. Air ball. Perusio with a heads up play, knocks it off an Ashland defender, and the Mohawks retain possession. 108 to go. On that one, but, uh, Akapov threw it off his leg. Yeah. They try to get it to Wong, it never got there. It's on Freddie wouldn't shoot. No, good hustle out to get the ball, loose ball. Burris sees a lane. Up hard, doesn't go. Shot clock has expired, it would have counted. Now the clock is in no hurry. Now Less than use, a minute uh, to go. Use the clock a little bit. Five point foul. lead. Max rushes it a little and back rims it. So the Mohawks will have a chance. Max 41 did. seconds to go there. Good look there. But Ashland leading by five. Timeout. Mohawks, I'm guessing. Oh, did Ashland use the timeout? Let's see. No, it was the Mohawks. They have no timeouts left. Yeah, Millis uh, looking to come up with five points in the last minute. And I don't know if they got it in the tank, but Ashland just has to continue to play that defense. Max that time not milking the clock. Uh, had a good open look, Bob, but he might have wanted to wait. But he was feeling it, so he decided to, to yes. fling it up there. Just yes. didn't go down for him. Yeah, nothing wrong with the shot. No, he's a shooter, and he just, just needed had the big it to three. happen about 10, 12 seconds <laughs> later. Right? Well, you know, he had a nice lane, too, and I think uh, given the foul situation and the way he could penetrate, that would have been a nice time to go to the hoop. Yeah, you never criticize for that. No. No, coaches like that, especially in these situations. There's a double bonus. There's always a good time to draw a foul. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got uh, two of the, the key players for Millis in foul trouble. Well, coming out of this, Ashland uh, just has to take care of business, not do anything silly, uh, play play good, sustained defense, make Millis use the clock. Of course, from Max's standpoint, he's probably saying, "Geez, you know, that was a clean look. I may not get a clean look." He did have a clean look. But maybe the last one of this possession, you know. Yeah. 
Dominic Zonfredi, the newest freshman, pressed into service tonight, not even on the varsity roster. What a nice job, too. He and the other freshman, Adams. Burris again to the hoop. Again, he's underneath. Oh. But this time, he's bailed out by the foul, which stops the clock yeah. and gives you a chance to add points to your total. Max is third. Have we seen Carter sure. at the line tonight? Uh, yep, he's made two. I made three, excuse me. Three for four. Three for four. He's missed one. He swishes it. And that's what you don't want. You don't want them to stop the clock with a foul. Max played good high defense there. This will make it a one possession game. And he makes it. Ashen leading by three. 32 seconds left. Feinberg under pressure in the backcourt. Long pass to Mitch Porter. It's too far. It's Millis ball with 26 what, seconds. That's what you don't want to happen. Give the ball back with uh, ample clock. Ashen has to get back and play defense now. The Millis full court pressure. Turns it over. Funnel the ball, now go get him. 25 seconds left. Burris by himself against Porter. He's across the timeline. Between the legs. Arkhipov at the arc. Loses his dribble. Burris the three, blocked by Faniff. Arkhipov gets it back. He takes a three. In and out. Who's got it up and in? One. One point game, four seconds. A foul. Out. Mills with no timeouts. Mills wow. got the rebound, put it in quickly, but now there's only 2.3 seconds. I don't know if the officials are going to be adjusting the clock. Uh, Coach Adams calling the uh, team over. He has no timeouts. He's going to uh, do it quick. Caruso. I guess Ashland used the timeout. Well, Caru no, no timeout. Caruso is disqualified, Bob, with the fifth foul. Oh, he's taking the so minute. So he's got yeah. the minute to, to talk to his team. Uh, Caruso's, yeah, I don't think the coach knows uh, who's going in just yet. It's going to be, it's going to be uh, Ryan Smith. Well, Ashley needs to put somebody back playing center field so there's no long pass. 2.3 seconds is not, uh, it's not a short amount of time in basketball. You can't miss the free throws uh, intentionally or anything like that. Max at the line is very reliable. He makes, uh, he makes one, it's going to be difficult. Makes two, it's going to be impossible for Millis to win. Again, Millis with no timeouts, yeah. and they miss it right here. Max, very cool. He's yeah. made a lot in a row, Bob. Sure has. I know he's had two misses tonight, but they were a long time ago. Yeah. Three-point game, 2.3 seconds. The Mohawks throw it away. No, they've got it at midcourt. It's good if it goes. It doesn't. And Ashen. The um, Clackers win it. Nice, uh, nice tenaciousness tonight. And they uh, they came back to win that one. A great rally from a seven-point halftime deficit. The Clackers win it in the fourth period. 57 for Ashland and 54 uh, for Millis. Wow. And uh, a great, great game and a lot of fun here at Ashland High School tonight. The Clockers get their second straight win in dramatic fashion. Well, I have to say they're finding their sea legs, Bobby. They, uh, they were looking for an identity, and uh, they, they, they found it defensively in the second half, uh, and just enough offense to come out of the gym tonight with a, with a victory. So uh, the kids will go into this Christmas break feeling pretty good. The final score, Ashland 57, uh, Millis 54. And running it down on the scoring. We had a lot of scoring tonight on both sides. We saw some great performances on both sides. Uh, the uh, Millis Mohawks uh, led by their two stars, uh, Ivan Arkhipov and Kevin Corusio, number 24, the big guy. They did most of the scoring uh, for Millis. But uh, Sean Page and uh, Carter Burris and Justin Wong uh, proved to be very good complimentary players. Yeah, yeah. And the two freshmen pressed into service tonight. Dom Zonfridi, 21, and P.J. Adams, 14, really acquitted themselves they well. They did a nice and, job. Uh, what does it say for, about what the coach thinks about you when you're on the floor in the final seconds of a tight, tight game like this? Well, it may be no uh, that coincidence. That shows a lot of confidence. The, the coach's name is Adams, and the little point guard freshman is P.J. Adams. Uh, 
There may be uh, more than a coincidence there. I don't know, but you know, but PJ, the coach is bald, and PJ seems <laughs> to have hair. So well, good point there. I didn't see a, uh, I didn't see a familial, a familial relation, uh, uh, resemblance, I should say. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But we'll, uh, we'll find out next year when we see the right. marks back. If he's uh, yeah. a little thinner on top. And for Ash on the Ash side of the letter, I thought Max uh, played relentlessly tonight. Yeah, Max, uh, uh, 27 points and uh, a monster from the free throw line. Um, he wound up missing two free throws on the night. He, he made uh, two, four, six, 10, 13, 15. He was 15 for 17 from the free throw line. That's a great percentage. And how many in the second half? Uh, he made, uh, what did I say, 17? He made, um, he made nine in the second half. Wow, yeah. nine free throws made in the yeah. second half. Yeah. Out of nine, did he miss any in the second one, half? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, excuse me, 10, 10 for 12 in the second half. Okay, so he did miss his two in the second yeah. half. And 27 points, a big night here at the Ashland High Great School gym. For Max. for Max. I thought Francis Lobega showed that he has a lot of potential, a lot, a of, lot grit, of toughness. Played hard. Uh, you know, obviously he's not going to be an offensive uh, superstar, but he plays great defense and great hustle. Cam Faneuf. Uh, monster game on both ends of the court. Uh, so did Mike Boudreau. He played. He played great uh, defensively the whole game. Didn't score in the first half, Bob, but didn't deter him. He had five second half points and played good defense. His brother Paul wound up with nine, seven of them in the first half. So the Boudreau boys uh, had 14 points between them. Uh, for for uh, for Millis, uh, Ivan Akerpov, 14 in the first half, only one hoop in the second half. F played with foul trouble, wound up with 16. Uh, Carter Burris, who played a nice game at, at point guard, had seven. Justin Wong wound up with 12. Played a steady game throughout. He's a nice little ball player. And uh, uh, Kevin Caruzio, who is the, the big man for them, number 24, wound up with 16. And he was played with fouls and finally fouled out with about 50 seconds left. Ashland uh, also had five from Chris Van Cleef. Uh, Steve uh, Spencer Robido had, had two. Uh, Francis Lubega had a, had a bucket. Uh, if I didn't mention him already, Chris Van Cleef had five, uh, Mike Boudreau five, Cam Fan of seven, Paul Boudreau nine, and Max Feinberg with 27. Pretty well distributed with Max leading the way. Yeah, seven players scored for Ashland. Yeah. Uh, good distribution. You know, Max is going to score a lot. Mitch and Porter played a lot and uh, played good defense but did not score tonight. No, uh, Kyle Booth, Kyle Booth, Justin Burns, Matthew Gazard, T.J. Braun, and John Van Cleef did not play tonight. And I, I got to think cause something's wrong with uh, John because he played a lot yeah, last usually, year usually and uh, plays, he would have rotated in if yeah. he was available tonight. But you never know yeah. what's going on. And I did not ask the coach. So two and two on the season, a, 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 a home win, yeah. and uh, they really needed it. And uh, I don't I think, think they. Uh, I, don't I think, think they saw what they can do tonight yeah. and what they can't do. I think one of the things that was very valuable for them, Bob, is uh, they realized that despite the fact that things weren't going down for them and they they weren't in the lead for most of the game, that if you stick to it, tenacity pays off. At the end, they'll go home with this W and feel pretty good about it. But there were times during that game you must have been frustrated because the ball was going in and coming out. It it, it was like there was a lid on it. Uh, but again, if you stick to it. Uh, you know, good things happen. That's what you happened know, tonight. The three guys underneath, um, Faneuf and yep. the Boudreaux brothers, they just didn't give up all no. night. Just kept attacking. Yeah, great defense. And great defense yeah. as well, of course. Yeah, they, they, uh, I think they had uh, caused only one shot clock violation by Millis, but they, they got a lot of times the clock down to uh, single digits and below. They, just nice sustained defense. A lot of turnovers. They didn't press until uh, later in the game, too, and that was effective for them. I think um, they just wore Millis down. They, they were deeper than Millis. Uh, and, and, and I think if they meet again, it, I can see Ashland winning by, by a lot more than this if they just get a few hoops to go in. And finally, last but not least, the Bob Martell, player of the game. Well, I think you can't, you can't overlook uh, a lot of the, the Patriots. Sometimes you forget you know, who the heart and soul of the team is. Uh, Max Feinberg, 27 points. Uh, played the point a lot of the game. Played great defense on uh, on Ivan Akapov, the best player on the Millis team. So I'd say uh, Max Feinberg going into this holiday break uh, gets the Bob Martel player of the game tonight. Well, you know, we said at the beginning of the game 
that he was the go-to guy this year, and he stepped up. He, he stepped up and he assumed that role tonight. Yeah, did what he had to do. And that's how the Clockers got uh, the impetus to get the win tonight. Uh, that was the spark they needed, and uh, uh, if he's going to be the leader, he has to lead, and that's what he did tonight. And uh, Faneff and the Boudreaux boys really oh, terrific. Uh, aggressive tonight. That front line, uh, like we said, bookends, uh, three bookends. They're all about the same size. They all hustle. They're not, they're not big, huge guys. They're not... Uh, you know, super beefcakes, uh, they're not 6-7, but geez, they, they played hard and they, they did a nice job. The final score for the final time was Ashland 57 and Millis uh, 54. We want to thank our great crew tonight. Uh, Jeff McGrath, McGranton, McGradden, Matt Gemma, Laura Priest, Connor Donovan, and tonight's game produced and directed by uh, Dan Baker. My partner is Bob Martell. Uh, this is Bob Thacker. Uh, thanks for watching and happy holidays.